Welcome to Peak Pyrography, where we discuss artistry and process with creators in the wood burning and pyrography community. I'm your host, Justine Fetty. I was introduced to wood burning in 2020 and haven't looked back since. Today on Peak Pyrography, we have Katie and Cameron from the very least ultralight gear to talk about making their own outdoor gear. Cameron and Katie have been creating lightweight outdoor gear out of a converted barn and their live-in van since 2020. Hi guys, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? Hi, we're great. Doing great. Yeah, nice and warm over here. Yeah, where in the world are you? We're in New Zealand, South Island. Awesome. Loving it there. It's summertime, right? Yes. Yeah. Hot and sunny and very hot. Far cry from the January of Colorado. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Um, are you guys, do you guys have an online presence? Where can our listeners find you guys? Yeah, we have a website. It's the very least at the very least dot co dot nz or dot nz if you're from <laughs> Australia or New Zealand, or you can find us on Instagram at the very least underscore ug. Awesome. Awesome. So I want to talk a little bit about the beginnings for you guys. How did you come up with the idea of the very least? How did you decide on the name? You want to start with the beginning? Yeah, um, I guess it kind of just stemmed from we started making our own gear, uh, things that we wanted, things that we thought would be useful uh, based on all previous gear we had used. And then it kind of caught some attention while we were hiking some trails around New Zealand and thought, hey, maybe, maybe we could do something with this. There's definitely a market here. So we, we started and here we are. Yeah, it's been a fun process just to turn this passion into a bit of a business. And it's been really fun. The name, the very least, has actually been a handle, my online handle, whether it's gamer tags or video game character names for me for many, many years. And it just so happened that when we were thinking of what what should we call the business, I just, that popped into my head and I was like, this is perfect for a lightweight backpacking gear company because, you know, we want to get you out there with the minimum that you, that you really need. So the very least, bring the very least with you. That's awesome. I love that. Um, and when did you guys start the very least? We, I guess we technically officially started um, the company and applying for our business and numbers or name and stuff in May of 2021, but we really didn't start making and selling until May of 2022. Okay, so relatively new, but I I assume you're making some progress and learning learning some stuff and making some stuff? Absolutely. Learn, yeah, learn lots (laughs) every day, (laughs) learning something new. And yeah, that's fantastic. I love to hear that. So let's talk about some of the things that you guys are working on right now. What's what's one of your big projects or a couple things that you're working on right now that you really want to highlight? Well, it's the beginning of the year, so we're wrapping up some inventory audit, just making sure we've got everything um as up to date as possible before we really start. See all these drawers and part numbers for everything. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> so getting everything squared away. Uh, but we've, we're also working on our current customer. Uh, wants a custom pattern, uh, 20 liter fast pack, which is called the Ridge Run. Yep. And so we're working on that right now. And then a pair of rain mittens. So we're pretty excited about that, working on some custom artwork and getting some materials ready to take with us on the road so we can make it while we're driving around. Yeah, and then on top of that, after we, while we're doing that, we also make some products, build them up to have in stock. And then when they're done, we'll put them up online on inst- Instagram or wherever and see if anybody bites on them. That's, that's great. Have you been getting some bites? Have you been able to get much up online? 
Not really. I think because the holiday season has been pretty busy, surprisingly for us, and then with the inventory out, it has been a new a new thing for us, but we knew it needed to happen, so that's been what we've been focusing on. Yeah. We've had some interest. We have, we have our online presence, but it's definitely in the queue to update and refine our website and add some new products to it, so in the making. Cool. When when you guys are making bags and making other gear, um, what's your process? Like, how do you decide what size of a bag to make or which clips to put on it or things like that? Great question. Yeah, that's a big deal. <laughs> for, for custom packs, it's actually kind of easier in a way because they know, typically our customers know what they want. They say, we want this. We want this, we want this, these features, and then we just figure out how to make those features happen. So that's that's more of a straightforward, we can quantify it a bit and say, they want this for this size, so we measure that, and that's how long it should be. But then when we're making things that we're just putting out there to see if anybody wants to buy, we kind of have to decide what people want. And so that's the hard part. Is yeah, we, it's been a big challenge. It has been a big challenge. We have to decide what we think people want. And so when when we get to that, we just have to lean back on, we're experienced hikers and backpackers and we're making gear that we wanted first. So we need to make the gear that we think we think that we would want, hopefully they would want as well. Something that we found useful uh, when we were on the trail, when we were hiking. Yeah. Do you do any kind of market research or anything to figure that out anymore? Or is it, it it's mostly gut feel? Mostly gut feel. We definitely do market research, uh, especially of our few competitors that we have here in New Zealand. Um, My market research is scrolling through Instagram and I'm like, whoa, that's really cool. Oh, that's super cool. So it helps that it's kind of a passion too, that my personal Instagram is full of backpacks and bags that I kind of riff off of sometimes because I'm like, oh, that's super cool. And generally that's that's the best way to do it. Uh, Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I do all the time with my wood burning check it out see what people are doing and grab the inspiration from them i love it i love it i'm so what when you're making bags what's your style how does it differ from some of the bigger guys or some of your competitors locally you don't have to name names or anything but um how how does your style differ (laughs) I would say for us, something that we've really concentrated on, and Cameron's done an amazing job of engineering, is we have um, pretty sim- relatively simple construction. And so we've got, you know, we pride ourselves on having a one piece front panel. So it's all continuous and it's seamless. And therefore, it increases the durability and increases the waterproofness. Uh, so I think that's one way that we can definitely differentiate and stand out from a lot of our competitors, even some of the bigger name ones. I think the next big thing is just color. Yeah. We love color. We like putting color on things. Some the black and white aesthetic is really looks really great, I think, but we love colors. So we're offering this different option of lots of colors, lots of colors we can print on them. We found this printer here in Christchurch that we can print on our fabric. So you can get any digital file printed on there very very nicely. So that's that's probably one of the bigger things for us yeah we want to bring trail flare personality <laughs> to that that person's that person's personality and put it the tra- into trail flare on their packs yeah. trail flare i love that i love that so in general would you say that you make more of what sells or custom projects or things that you are feeling passionate about I think it definitely started with things that we're passionate about. Uh, we like this, so we'll make it. And then it's it's grown into custom custom packs, um, what other people want. And that's really cool. And now we've kind of started going, dipping back into what do we want and what is popular um, right now. So we've got a couple new products that I think would be um, fit those categories. Do you want to share any of that? Or are you not yeah, ready so to... The, the newest one, absolutely. The newest one we've got is the what we were calling the Sundry, which is a, a bum bag or a fanny pack, depending on which, where country? You're, which country you are in the world. <laughs> and so it's just a small little thing. Here, I just got it here. Just a small little bag here that 
big enough for phone, wallet, keys, but not much more. Just all those sundry items that you bring with you every day. You can wear it around your waist, on the side, and on the front, on the back, or you can wear it as a, a shoulder bag, like is popular nowadays. This is where I wear it like this all the time in the summer now. It's perfect for it. So this has been kind of one of our favorites recently because you, you came up with the design and it's yeah. It's an excellent waterproof design. I don't know if you can see that the top is basically seamless until you get to the zipper, so no water ingress there. And it's fully seam taped on the inside, so this isn't only fashionable, but it's Fun. perfectly <laughs> functional, weatherproof for hiking or for whatever you want to do with it. Perhaps not swimming. I'd, yeah, probably not <laughs> quite that waterproof. What about, what about kayaking? Yes, definitely. As long as it's not fully submerged, it should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I'm a big fan of the, the bum bag fanny pack idea. Use them all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's take a quick break here to hear from our sponsor and we will be right back Great. we've always been makers we've always just wanted to make things and we've also always been hikers and so it just kind of came together that way that we wanted to make the things that we use hiking just like to bring bring some color to the ultralight backpacking realm our stuff is cool it looks good it's got colors we can print whatever you want on it it's made of dcf i think we would like to help people be able to get outdoors and enjoy the outdoors more easily and maybe with more trail flair Try to have simple designs and complex ideas. Yeah. All right, and welcome back. Uh, let Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about you guys personally. What do you do to practice? balance for yourselves between your art, business, self-care? What do you do to take care of you? Your your relationship since you're married? Oh man, that's a good question. <laughs> We're That's something that I think we didn't really realize would be a struggle or as much of a struggle as it is. We both came from working in corporate jobs where it's very structured to now we're running our own business out of this space where we have to come up with our own structure and we have to make our own schedule and we have to figure everything out where sometimes if we're not feeling like oh man that's a difficult thing that we need to do that next task is going to take a lot then it can get put off and then it's up to us to do it or not so that's been definitely a hurdle to figure out yeah we're we're both uh, not necessarily self-starters and we feed off of each other so that <laughs> definitely just keeps building or falling uh, so that's been very difficult but I think now with this space this is our new new office new workspace um, we've created a little bit of separation here in our barn so we've got our workspace right next door to our home space and I think that that's really helped um, create some mental separation as well this is work that's home so I think we're excited to be able to really fall into that schedule. So between your business and uh, you've got home and you've got business right next to each other. And then are there things that you guys do to take care of yourselves? I, I mean, there's there's the home side of it. Are you able to like, un- what do you do to unwind? And I don't know if you ever do. You just are always engineering the <laughs> yeah, next so thing, this is, right? <laughs> this, I don't know if you can see it over here. Maybe not right now. Yeah, we can. There's a 3D yeah, printer. There's a 3D printer just off screen and got that for Christmas. That's been my my toy, basically. It's been printing, it seems like nonstop since we've yeah. gotten it, just with projects that I want to make or ideas that I've had. That's the other great t- piece of having so much time is that I can kind of all these crazy ideas that I've had that maybe I can turn into a product or maybe I can't. This is the the time to test and the 3D printer really helps accelerate that whole process tenfold, twentyfold, because it can think of something, design it, test it, that later that day have something to see, proof of concept. 
So that's what nice. I do online. <laughs> I design more. <laughs> M- more designing, more working. <laughs> but but if it's your passion, that that is unwinding. And it's a different kind of passion for you than, say, designing ultralight gear. Right. Yeah. yeah. Totally different parts of the brain, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, I think just my health mentally and physically is important. So I just make sure I'm doing yoga, morning dance parties and meditation workouts, things like that, just to keep my my body and my mind feeling healthy and ready to to go. And then um, I've recently, I guess, really started getting into wood burning more. So I've been doing some of that in my free time. Oh, awesome. Yeah, which is still a creative process. So it's, uh, but it is wanna, You want to throw your handle like... in here? How can, how can we I, f- find that art from you? It, it'll be uh, Pyromaniac. So uh, soon Awesome. To uh, yeah, so I've been doing some wood burning. Uh, thanks to my sister-in-law, who's amazing and introduced <laughs> me to it. And really excited. Got a new burner, so I'm really excited to, to do some more. Um, and that's creative process. So I get to draw and I get to come up with my own designs and then I get to, to burn it, which is the most exciting part. And then beyond that, I really like to watch crime movies or listen to crime books. That's my, <laughs> I don't know. That's what I enjoy. That's, that's great. Obviously I love wood burning. And the other thing that I like to do is uh, play video games with some friends and family a good evening unwind yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, l- let's talk ups and downs I'm sure you've had some uh, how do you handle the bad days and what do you take from the good days so the good days are easy to describe <laughs> because it's when you put a bag together. So I, I guess it's, they're kind of interlaced, of course. The bad days kind of feel like you're slogging or you're doing, you're working on these shoulder straps because shoulder straps are the most complicated. <laughs> We're working on these for Who would have thought? You know? Who would have thought? I know, right? No, days and you, this detail needs to be there and you accidentally mess something up and you're like, okay, this is fine. I can rip that stitch, but then that just takes extra time and you do it again and you have to do this and it just feels like you're not getting very much progress on this one single shoulder strap out of two out of six different pieces that you need to make and so that feels that's probably the lowest is just this when you're in it and you're like I'm not making much progress it doesn't feel like I'm getting very far but then the flip side of that is then you have these six pieces and once you have these six sub sub assemblies ready to put together, then they just zip right together, and you're like, "Holy cow, I'm so fast!" And then in the <laughs> end, like the the best days are when you have this bag that suddenly in one day it's just going from sub assemblies to one bag completed. There looks good, you know, all that planning we did beforehand for this size or that size, it all comes together. Even though all those doubts in your mind, like, "Oh, I think this is going to be too small," or "This isn't going to fit right." It all comes together because we we planned it out, figured it out, and then you've got this bag, and you're like, this looks rad. This is freaking rad, man. So that's, sorry, that's my, those are my lows and highs, I think, in bag making specifically. Yeah, I think I would add that a low for us especially is doing the harder things, like marketing. Neither of us want to do that. That's why (laughs) our online presence is lacking a little bit. And so we just keep putting it off because the making is fun. So we want to make, we want to create, we want to make another thing. And so that's fun. So let's do that. Uh, Then the unfun stuff kind of just gets shoved in the corner. So I think the low days are when we try to tackle those, uh, those tasks. And then like similar to what you said is the the highs are getting this final final product, um, especially if it's a custom pack. We took the customer's ideas and what they wanted yeah. and their desires, and we were able to create something pretty magical and it's complete. And then delivering it to the customer, whether it's in person or just you know getting to send it to them and seeing like a response of some sort, whether it's via text or something. It's just been that that's pretty cool just to get get the feedback sure. of their sure. level of stoke. The, those man this is dope text messages are the best so on those days where you're making shoulder straps or you're 
avoiding marketing? How, what, what do you do to get through that day? Just ignore it or do you, what do you do to get through it? Cause you have to, right? One yeah. step at a time, you know, you just gotta do it. There's no, no, no way to get around it. You just have to cut this two inch piece, do yeah. this, sew it on, get the next piece, sew it on. I think what's helped us is we've, we've prided, prided ourselves on not having much waste. And so we have very minimal waste and a lot of it is in soft scraps that we collect. We're going to turn into a pillow or something, but we have very minimal waste. And so I think that's something that has mentally got in our way of, oh, well, what if we cut this and it's the wrong size, then we've wasted material, but we've kind of gotten over that by saying, well, if we cut this, we've got plenty of other products that part of that can be used towards. Maybe it's that exact size if that didn't work for this pack. So I think that's helped us kind of push past those decisions, all those little decisions that we make that's stopping us from actually moving forward. We can say, all right, well, we got to try it and then we know, and then we can still use this piece on something else instead of it completely going to waste. That, that makes a lot of sense. I, I love that sustainability aspect of it and that, that that's such a priority for you guys. And, and on those good days, what do you take from that? How do you save some of that like good feeling for your bad days? That's a good question. Uh, I think just, you know, looking at pictures of past products, whether we're working on their website or... Uh, yeah, I don't know, flipping through something, I'll come across a picture of a pack that we made and just remembering how we felt when we finished that or how the customer felt when they received it and just kind of writing that high of how excited they were and how excited we were when we when it came together. Um, I've heard some people say they like save a file of all the positive emails or messages and they go back and look at those when they're having a hard time. Do you have anything like that? Not yet, but I love that idea. So I think that's something that we should probably put together. <laughs> awesome. So what's next for you guys? What's your fu- what are your future plans, personal business? Anything you want to share? Anything we can follow you on? Any journeys we can follow you on? Let's see. We're about to go on another road trip. So we're about to take our van back out again, which we're really excited about. We've been kind of settled for four months and... We're really excited to get back into our van, get our sewing machine back into our van, and we're gonna travel around for about five weeks, South Island and North Island. So we're gonna we're trying to figure out in these next few days what smaller products we can bring with us and be making along the way and hopefully work on our website when we've got some internet. And beyond that, I'm not I'm not sure. Yeah, I that's short term. I think in the long term I've I've got some projects that I wanna see if could turn into a product whether that's you know this specific hat sort of thing or i'm looking longer term into like tent making because that's one thing that new zealand there's not like a cottage tent maker in new zealand there's a few different bag makers here and there but there's not a cottage tent maker so that's 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 cool and you guys have that history with making with making a tent and you've got that that there's a blog up to make your own you, do you know the website for that Make Your Own Gear blog? Uh, that one's on my personal blog, CameronFetty.wordpress.com, but I would have to... If you look up MYOG Pyramid Tent, mine's first on Google, so... <laughs> All right, there you go. Search engine optimization. Exactly. Yeah, or and something. the tent was the, the thing that got us into making our own yeah, gear in uh, the first place. That was the so first project that we so had. So it'd be fun to come back around to that and then start selling them. Yeah, and I mean, the ultralight gear, the very least ultralight gear, that doesn't really lock you into backpacks. You certainly could make tents and, as you've said, mittens and other gear needed for backpacking or I suppose other. That's so fun. All right, we're going to oh, do yeah, a little... Long term. Go ahead. I was just going to say, in the long term... We're still, we don't plan on like outsourcing, you know, we want to keep it small, keep it local. We don't, if we're big enough that we have to 
compete with the big guys and outsource to some other country. I think that's, that's when we've not... outgrown what we want to be. Yeah, too big for okay. our bridges. We want to we want to intentionally be a small business, and you know, maybe one day we hire some additional sewers. But we like to personally be involved, and we like to have that contact with customers and to be to be hands on. We like to be involved in it, and so I think that's our long term long term plan. And Ma- maybe meantime, hire a marketer. We'll yeah, no, I'm exactly. Oh, that'll be so nice. <laughs> Um, I think we've, we've also, we're also probably going to go to uh, take some of our smaller items to markets. So our bum bags slash fanny pack and uh, our wallets, which is our new design called the facet. And so we'll take some of those smaller items along with maybe some of my wood burning to some markets across the country and then in, on the website. And then hopefully we'll, um, yeah, it, basically right now we're word of mouth, which I think works pretty well. Um, we just need to get more words in more people's mouths to spread, <laughs> to spread the uh, <laughs> the joy uh but yeah i think another thing that we've talked about doing is setting up our van uh, alongside te Aroa, the trail that we we hiked earlier this i guess last year and set up and kind of just be some trail angels not necessarily to sell our products we would have some with us but just to be there for support have some snacks have some goodies mm. just be there to to root them root fellow hikers along as they as they go on their journey. That's so fun. I love that. Well, let's move on to our speed round here. Speed round here. Uh, okay. We're going to say that you are on a deserted island. And on this deserted island, you can have one sewing machine, one type of material, one accessory, and one other kind of odd item what would they be so sewing machine we have the singer heavy duty which is you know the top of the consumer line and it's worked great for us we've made so much on it and you know it's been perfectly capable some people say that there are some issues with durability but we've we used it in a van for a year and didn't take any care of it, and it's still going <laughs> perfectly well. So that it works great for everything. We need to use it for this and that, and zigzag stitches and this sort of stitch Bartax and everything like Bartax. And... So like, it seems like it would still it'd be perfect for a deserted island in that. <laughs> I agree. So yeah. we use it. What material the would you then have? Ooh. You get one material. Probably Challenge Ultra. Yeah, I think Challenge Ultra. We so we use DCF and Challenge Ultra. They're very similar in many ways, different in many ways. But Challenge Ultra probably takes the edge. We don't know if we can print on it yet, though. We'll figure that out. Okay. One accessory. Since you've just done all of your uh, gear organization or inventory, you've got a good idea of those. <laughs> Uh, 3D printer. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good choice. We can, print, we can print buttons and buckles and print fasteners. And <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's cheating, but all right, I'll give it to you. <laughs> and then wh- you if there's that. like one other odd item that you wouldn't think of that you use for making your own gear. We just got an iron because we were like, we need an iron. I know typically sewing is people use irons, but like the material we use will melt typically <laughs> if you use an iron on it. So I don't think we would use that on Challenge Ultra. Yeah. I don't know. That's don't know. a it's tough good. one. Yeah, we're stumped. Can't think of a good one. I If it was a, you answering it personally, I would say your ocarina just because it helps you just like relax and get out of your head and your workspace and then you can refocus on work. Sure. But I don't know if that I don't know if that counts. <laughs> That's great. Katie will answer for Cameron, and Cameron will answer for Katie. <laughs> yeah. That that's a sign of a good partnership. I love it. <laughs> um, so we're gonna do uh, some real quick. Th- this is the true speed round, and I have ten questions here. So why don't you guys just take turns? Each of you answer every other one. So. Pick who's going to go first, and then we'll run through these real quick. You can start us off. Great. I'll start us off. All right. Is it wrong for a vegetarian to eat animal crackers? 
<laughs> uh, no. Why can't we tickle ourselves? Because we know we're doing it? <laughs> Say good day, mate, in an Australian accent. All right, good day, mate. How you going? <laughs> what does the acronym SCUBA stand for? S C U B A. I don't know. <laughs> okay, answer, you, can, you can make it up. <laughs> okay, pass. Uh, what's your favorite type of muffin? Oh, you can take that one. Guess you missed the last one. Uh, probably orange chocolate chip muffins. What sound does a seal make? Or, 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 or. <laughs> Polka dots or stripes? Polka dots. Bulbasaurs. Are tomatoes a fruit or a vegetable? Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit, but wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. <laughs> Both. I love that. Great answer. Sour Patch Kids or Swedish Fish? Sour Patch Kids. And tell me what you like to do on the weekends in a Valley Girl voice. Like, so we totally would go to the mountains and like... You know, we just have such a great day out there, you know? Like, we would just go out there in the sun and fun and, like, totally have a blast. Thank you for, for, for playing along with our silliness here. <laughs> that was so much fun. I'm, like, such a big fan of silliness. So totally. Like, totally. So I, want, I, I always want to bring in some community building and shout outs here. So I'm going to ask you guys, what are three accounts that we all should be following that you take inspiration from or that just the ones that you're like, I have to check this one every single day. Ooh. Well, there's learn M Y O G at learn my learn M Y O G. You Tim is this on Instagram? this on Instagram? Yes. Yeah, sorry. This is on Instagram. Um, or, learn myog.com he's a great resource he's been really championing the community it feels like for a couple of years that he's been around like he started building up right as we started getting into it so it's been really fun to see him you know he puts out patterns really useful patterns and he, he's got some free pattern generators online and he's just a great great way to learn learn how to make your own gear just in the name that's one The next easy one I'd say is "Rips Up by the Roll." Oh. <laughs> they, beyond just being like a our supplier, material supplier, they also do a great job of building community and having a podcast that I like to listen to whenever they put it out. And they'll reach out, see what people, see what the community wants, and then buy that fabric. And if you can't buy little pieces of like Polar Tech Alpha, they'll go out and say, "Okay, well we'll get ten rolls of it." and yeah. There you go. Yeah, and they also create uh, kits, like create your own zip zipper bag kit or create your own bum bag kit, and so then they put these um, pieces together, and basically, so you can, it's a good introduction again, just like the other resource to start your own to make something. We've definitely used them for a couple times. Oh, third one, don't I don't know. I think. Do you That's all right. We, we can. <laughs> you got another one? I, I mean, yeah. I, my Instagram is full of them. I love. You're more of the I, social media person. So. Yeah, I've really been following like Japanese and South Korean ultralight makers mm -hmm. recently. They've got some really cool, really aesthetic things. Like I think Japanese and uh, the South Koreans, they really have like this, this aesthetic way of having things and this proper way of making and eating and cleaning up after themselves which is really interesting to me so there's one i think make to hike i think on instagram make to hike is just a cool he makes some really cool tents dcf tents dome tents all kinds of cool stuff that's that'd be my third recommendation cool cool um let's do one more uh 
one more shout out on your current drops any current products drops anything exciting happening for you guys yeah like we said before there's the sundry yeah this is one that we'll be bringing around taking to markets and one of the cool things about it oh yeah it's got a specialized pocket in there for the, for the facet the facet wallet which is we'll, our ultra lightweight wallet Minimalist. So are you selling those as a package deal? Yes. Our plan is to have a matching set. And so you can either buy both or individually, but have the colors and the, the trail flare match each other. And the other cool thing is that we've got all kinds of colors for the hip belt here. So we can actually see them back here. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. We've actually come up with a way that we can uh, customize the colors of the hip belt on the spot, like on the fly. So at markets or on the trail. So we're pretty pretty excited about that. And I'm personally oh, excited awesome. about this product because it's the first one I've designed pretty much by myself. So it's one that <laughs> I can kind of like own and like run with. Yeah, take take that like individual pride in your group project. It's awesome. Yeah. So this is the big one that we've been very excited about recently. Yeah, I, I'm on board with that one for sure. And the idea of changing out, because you don't want someone to be there and be like, oh, well, yeah, I just don't like the orange. And you'd be like, well, let's fix that. Let's fix that. You can have That's blue all. and green, or you can have pink and yellow, or you can have pink and pink. So so many options, and that's the best kind of stuff from cottage places and make your own gear places. And yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on today. I love talking to you guys, hearing about your process and uh, and everything about the very least ultralight gear. Uh, for the listeners, you can find Cameron and Katie online at theveryleast.co.nz and on Instagram at theveryleast underscore UG. Yeah, thank you so us. much. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having, having us. us. Good chat and love the questions. Yeah, I love that. Well, that was so much fun to talk with Katie and Cameron and extra special because as my brother and sister-in-law, they volunteered to be the guinea pigs for this show and helped me to develop and record this episode as the test episode for Peak Pyrography. Since it turned out so well, we decided to post it anyway. You can find Katie and Cameron online at theveryleast.co.nz or on Instagram at theveryleast underscore UG. The next episode, we'll be talking with Jen LeBerg from North Star Pyrography about her lifelike pyrography style. Peak Pyrography is produced by Fetty Studios and Justine Fetty. Our producer and sound engineer is Kevin Fetty. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like and subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. You can share comments on today's podcast or suggestions for the future on Instagram at peak underscore at peak underscore pyro or via email at peakpyrography at gmail.com. That's P-E-A-K-P-Y-R-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y at gmail.com. Until next time, keep creating. I can't wait to see what you make next.